Beastlings, this is Robin, and we've got a very, very special treat for you today. Joining us for an interview is Mark of Epica fame, and Mark is the guitarist, songwriter, and the growling voice of Epica. They're currently on tour here in the U.S., supporting the Holographic Principle and the brand new EP, The Solace System. And The Solace System was just released on the 1st of September and contains six tracks that were recorded at the same time as The Holographic Principle. Uh, Mark, we're really glad to have you with us today. Uh, we were at the Denver show and just were rocked out of our minds by your performance. That It was everything we've come to expect from Epica and then some. And so thanks for giving us a little chat today. Uh, if you'd please just introduce yourself to our listeners, and could you tell us how the Solace System came about? Uh, yes, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Mark, the guitar player of Emka. And uh, the, the Solace System is, uh, contains six songs that we wrote for the, the Holographic Principle. Uh, on that album, we had, we had written 18 songs for the album, and all of these 18 songs were written to be the album tracks. But uh, we had to drop six because simply the 18 tracks don't fit on, on, on an album. And those uh, six songs that got dropped, we didn't want to uh, yeah, have them end up like uh, bonus tracks. So we decided to uh, keep them together and release an EP. And in this, in this form, it, uh, I think it does justice to, to the songs that were really, yeah, put a lot of, we put a lot of effort in them to, to write them uh, and, and record them just like the album track and like this I think they got a well-deserved spot on the EP. I absolutely have to agree the EP is fantastic and I love Thank the you. beautiful flow from uh, the holographic principle into the solid system. So we've got some slightly unorthodox questions for our interviews today because you know we know you get a little tired of answering the same questions in every interview. So if we can go ahead and kind of get a little personal, uh, yeah. what has inspired you recently? Um, that, yeah, I, I, it's always hard to explain where inspiration comes from because I think not, no, no one really knows what, what really causes the, the inspiration to, to write a song, for example. Uh, recently, I, I wrote a, a ballad and uh, it, I just decided from one moment to the other I, I'm going to write it. I have no idea where that inspiration came from. I just decided it and it, and it was happening fast and felt good and I kept going. And before I knew the song was finished. So, and then when you look back at it, how did it start? How, how, how you got inspired to write the song? It can be maybe just one word that somebody tells to you that makes makes it start uh, it's, it's hard to tell i never know exactly where it comes from okay and that's pretty valid um so uh the, another question we have is uh, what is the relationship that you have with your label with nuclear blast records first of all nuclear blast records was uh, uh, already the, the biggest label when i was a kid that i was really dreaming about to, to be part of first of all so when we got the chance to sign with the nuclear blast that was for me a dream coming true and now over all those years uh, there's still many of the people that were working there when we signed with them they're still working there and uh, also with the, the american part of nuclear blast I, yesterday we were playing in los angeles and we we, uh, we got to see many of, of these guys so it's, it's always good to see them again and uh, they're doing a great job and uh, hopefully we can work with them many more years. Uh, we definitely hope so, too. We love what you've been able to release with Nuclear Blast. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what would you be doing if you weren't in the music industry at all? That's also a very tough <laughs> question because uh, <laughs> you never know exactly what you do if you don't do a certain thing. Um, I studied psychology, so maybe I would do something in the field of uh, psychology uh, or else. Uh, I, I love doing sports, so maybe if I was not didn't become a musician, I would have become an athlete. That's possible too. Uh, actually, there's many things that I like, and when I when I like something, I I put uh, my my thoughts on it, and, and I try to make it happen. It became music because that's uh, 
that was at that moment my biggest passion and still is. So that's why I became a musician. But I could have also done something else in life and put all my energy into that. Uh, when, when I want something, I, I just want to reach it. So however it happens, I, I don't mind, but it's, it should happen. And kind of going along with, with the what you think should happen, what you wish would happen, what song do you wish you could have written? Um, Hotel California. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the best songs ever written. And uh, uh, if, if I was the one who wrote it, I, I would have been proud. <laughs> what about Hotel California is it that, that really grabs you? It's a very, very catchy song. It's strong melodies. And it has a great uh, twin guitar solo at the end, which gives uh, goosebumps. I can agree with that. If you could duet vocally or instrumentally with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be? Maybe with uh, Jimi Hendrix. And would you sing with him? Would you do guitars with him? Would you do both? Whatever he would be up to that day. (laughs) (laughs) But a great musician, great guitar player, and I think uh, uh, one of the reasons why why I started playing guitar next to Slash of Guns N' Roses, which was uh, also a great uh, guitar hero for me. But uh, but he's still alive. Uh, But still, uh, one day working together with Slash would not be a punishment as well. You know, once again, we have to agree. Uh, what would be your perfect weekend if you could do anything, in absolutely anything you wanted? I would definitely start with uh, uh, waking up and uh, having a great big breakfast with uh, oatmeal, fruits, bread, whatever I desire at the moment. Then uh, I would climb uh, on my bike some mountains. Then I would uh, definitely do some swimming and then laying in the sun, relax, do some sauna, and in, in the evening going to a nice restaurant, and then after the restaurant, then uh, watching a nice episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Which character is your favorite in Game of Thrones? Uh, the dragon. Ah. But everybody would expect me to say, like, this, this guy or that girl. Mm-hmm. I like the, the, the three dragons. What about the dragons is it that, that draws you? Is it their ability to be free or that they get to hang out with Daenerys? <laughs> <laughs> they, they are great because they, are, they have a sweet side, but they can also be tough. <laughs> so it kind of represents you in that kind of hidden way? Yeah, and they, they, you cannot get them down easily. Unfortunately, one dragon uh, didn't make it yet. He is now at the opposite. <laughs> uh, so, but... Uh, but the, the dragons, they are, they are strong and they are powerful and they are still have the sweet side. So that, that's why I like them. Okay, kind of back completely off tangent. Do you ever go back and dig out uh, unfinished or old songs and think about polishing up or finishing them and releasing them? Um, there are not that many old songs that we haven't released. I think most of them eventually find their way on, on later albums. Of course, there's now some, some stuff that is, we didn't use for the last record and maybe gets used in the future, but they're, they are not really old songs from like the first albums that we, that we didn't use, or at least I, I'm not aware of it because I, I don't uh, keep old uh, tapes with me and, and listen to them again. I usually start from scratch uh, composing uh, and see what happens. And sometimes I start with a song that was unfinished Mm-hmm. Uh, but, that, but then it's not really like a, a 10 year old song it's more like uh, wasn't finished from the, from the last session how, how do you know when that song is finished? Um, the feeling so when you feel it's finished it's finished and uh, uh, of course when you start making music you have to find the, your way and to know you have to discover when it's finished it's when you work not long enough on it yet it could have been better when mm-hmm. you work too long on it, you, you start destroying it. But at a certain point, you know it's finished, and that, that's the best you can do. And uh, then it's up to like the producer or other band members to say, hey, I would do this different, or can we try this? And then you can still improve a song. But uh, for yourself, you, you, you feel when, when the maximum you can do. 
And how do you know when the, an album is finished, when it's got the perfect songs on it and it's complete? First of all, you, it's, it's never perfect. Perfect album, I think, doesn't exist, but that's a good thing. Because if the perfect album would exist, you would never be able to make a better one anymore. So then there would be no challenge anymore. But also with, with albums, you, you feel like now we got the right vibe, the right flow. Now it's the best we can do. We put the best selection of songs together and then you have to let it go. And let it, and once it's finished, you, you have to just let it go. Who decides on your album cover art? Is it uh, decided by majority vote by the band? Is it more up to the producers? Um, the cover artwork, no, we decide ourselves uh, who we want to work with. And the last uh, couple of albums, it's always been uh, Stefan Heilemann from Germany. Uh, he, he really interprets our lyrics in, in a great way. And he knows exactly what, what to do to visualize all the, the lyrical concepts that we have. And uh, we just sent him our lyrics and a brief description of what we think about it. And then we let him work on it. And most of the time, uh, there's almost no feedback needed what he comes up with. And sometimes, like with the Holographic Principal album, there was a bit more feedback needed to come to the final artwork. But usually, he comes up with something that really nails it right away. What are you planning on doing next, personally? Uh, not, uh, yeah, personally, I'm, I'm now working on a, on a new uh, Mayan uh, album with my other band. Mm -hmm. uh, so then uh, we, we want to release a new album, the third one. Uh, so ne next year, about early September, I think it's going to be. And because uh, that will be at the, the end of the touring cycles of uh, Epica, and then we're going to work with Epica also start writing a new album. So at that time, then it will be perfect for, for the other band Mayan to, to release an album. So you always have to make it uh, fit in the, in the schedule because Ep Epica is obviously the priority band. And whenever there's time, we can do some, some stuff with, with Mayan. And that keeps it also interesting to have uh, two different things that you're not only, only busy with the, the same band all the time. And that, uh, and that way you can also reload the battery uh, very well. How different musically, for, for our listeners, is Mayan from Epica? Yeah, Mayan has, first of all, um, way more singers. Uh, uh, two female singers, two, two grunters and uh, uh, a clean male vocalist, so five singers. And uh, so there's a lot of uh, variation in the vocals. But also, it's uh, I think uh, a, a bit heavier than, than Attica. It's, uh, it's a little less, uh, 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 how do you say that? A little less uh, commercial, so to say. But uh, both bands can be considered as uh, symphonic metal with death metal influences. Epic as well as Mayan, just just Mayan, uh, yeah, has more vocal vari uh, variation and and a bit heavier. Great. Um, then we only had 15 minutes with you. And so I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I really love getting to, to ask you some questions that most people don't ask. Thank, uh, yeah, thank you too. Yeah. And I just want to remind our listeners to make sure to catch Epica as they finish up their tour heading back east through the U.S. and then all throughout Europe. And also make sure you pick up a copy of The Holographic Principle and The Solace System. We appreciate right. your time today, Mark. And we wish you nothing but sold-out shows on the rest of your tour. Thank you for having me and wishing you a great day as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.